Welcome to the Social Stack, your go-to channel for marketing based in technology for your real estate business. I'm Amy Stack, and today we'll be talking about how to command your consumer experience, um, mostly focusing on the Keller Williams Consumer App. We'll touch on the website as well. Um, but with that, I would like to kind of just roll into an overview of what we'll be talking about today. If you guys were not aware, uh, you have lots of features on your app. Some are things that you would definitely expect from any home site search app, like, you know, the big ones out there, Zillow, Realtor, all that type of stuff. Of course, we have basic search features and stuff like that. Um, but on top of that, we have some things that I haven't seen in other places or are at least not widely available in other apps. So we're going to talk about some of those features and how uh, they can help you service your clients at a higher level. So things like home search, um, we can search by landmark. We have access to neighborhood details that feeds from next door. You actually have buyer and seller guides to help people kind of walk through the process of what it looks like to buy or sell. Um, there are collections and communication devices, like not devices, but systems in place for you to communicate with your clients and for them to communicate uh, with uh, friends that right through the app so they can share properties that they like. So we'll talk about all of that today. And I have a fun little app that will let me share my phone screen. So before we go into that, I would love for you to either unmute or put in the chat. And for those of you watching, go ahead and put on the chat as well. Um, do you already have your Keller Williams app branded to you? Have you ever looked at it? Yes or no? Let me know. Everybody in the chat so far is saying yes, that's great. I am just about to mirror my phone screen so you guys can see that. I'm pulling it up right now. Thinking, there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I just want to confirm that everybody can see my phone screen now. It's my iPhone, I see Christy Nadi. thank you. And I'm going to open the chat in case more questions come in there. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lovely. All right. So uh, if you haven't heard, there's actually a new Keller Williams app that has come out. That is the command app. So that's not what we're talking about today. That is agent specific. So that is your access to command on the go. Today, we're going to focus on this white one, which is just the KW app. This is what your consumers will use. And you're just gonna tap on it. So you can get it from the Apple Play Store. I mean, the Apple, um, the App Store or the Google Play Store and just look for Keller Williams Realty and it's white with the red KW there. So I have logged in. Um, I'm already logged into my app. If you have never logged in, um, you will need to create a, an account and you will create it just as a consumer would. It's not linked to um, command the way that the command app is. So you are going to use this app the same way a consumer would. And mo most of you said that you have already uh, logged in and kind of played around a bit. So just a quick refresher for any of you that haven't already assigned yourself. In the very bottom right hand corner of this app, there's a more button. And you'll be able to see um, the name at the very top is who is using it. So I'm logged in as my husband right now. And then this bar is the agent. So we have this hooked up to our demo account. So demo is my agent. If you are using this yourself, you want your name to be in both of those places. So to do to assign yourself, if you haven't already, it's going to say like find my agent or something similar. So you can just go ahead and click that button and type in your name and assign, pick yourself as your own agent. So you on your app want this to say your name in both places, unless you're logged in as you know a friend or something like I am. So I just want to give you a quick overview there. So as I mentioned, just like any other real estate app, you would expect to have features like filtering out prices, locations, you know, you can kind of scroll over and the map's going to repopulate more properties. I apologize, the screen you're seeing is a little behind what I'm seeing. So just want to make sure we're all on the same page. But at the very top, we have our search. 
So you could type in, it's got suggesting a city address, school, zip code, anything like that. Oh, my screen moved, one second. You guys still all see the phone okay? It moved on my computer. Okay, perfect. Um, so you can type in here, let's do Downers Grove, and it's gonna take me straight to Downers Grove. Great, easy peasy. Just below that, we've got some fun filter buttons. So you can see under for sale, there's a few options. You can even use a rent toggle there. Next to that, we've got price. So this is updated. If you haven't been on the app in a while, this used to be a slider left and right. Now it's easier to select between your price ranges. And you can see as I'm applying those filters, my screen below on the map is updating in real time. <clears throat> so next to the price, we've got property type. So you can narrow that down some more. We can say I want houses specifically. And then there's a more button, which will actually let us get into some more nitty gritties, beds, baths, square feet, lot size, your build, parking, amenities, open houses, and reduced price in the last seven days. So most of these are things you'll see everywhere, but those two at the very bottom could be really nice features to highlight to your clients. So especially in today's market with things going so fast once they're listed, maybe your clients want to be able to get into houses on the weekend and not necessarily have to schedule a time with you to go to them. Um, so maybe they want to toggle this, I want to see what properties have open houses so they can just go on their own. Obviously, you want to have that conversation with them to let them know that whoever's hosting, that they are working with you, maybe bring some of your business cards, but that's a way that you could leverage out some um, time so that you can actually schedule property showings on houses that they can't get into on their own. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So that's a fun little filter. And the other one is, you know, you've always got people that are looking for a deal. So maybe they want to use the price reduced in the last seven days filter. So I'm going to do that. I don't know if anything was reduced in the last seven days here. So let's apply it. And it looks like there were all of these houses should have a price reduction. And when I tapped on that one, you can see that this house actually dropped $5,000. And now that I have this listing open, I will show you what that experience looks like for your consumer as well. You can see that this one has a virtual tour. So that's noted right away. And from the screen, I can slide through and see all the images, or I can click on it to get more information. So I don't know if you noticed that this says one out of 21. It showed me about five or six before I had to click on it to get into more images. But once I did, I still I have that link to the virtual tour on there, the price, you know, all of this information is pretty standard. Um, I do have the option to save and share it. We'll look at that in just a moment. Again, you as the agent where it says your agent demo, your name will show up there for your consumer. And if they want quick access to you, they can just hit that little arrow on the right and it will bring up your marketing profile. So again, if you haven't been in the app in a little, this has gotten an update, so go check it out. Make sure it looks right. You have a bigger picture now, some more information. And of course your brokerage and contact information on there. So that's your marketing profile. And just below that, these are things that are custom to the KW app. We have um, a connection to the insurance portion of Keller Williams, so Keller Covered, and the mortgage. Oh, I flipped those, sorry. This first one is uh, Keller Mortgage, and then this one is Keller Covered. So I think most of us have heard about Keller Mortgage at this point in time, but you can tap on it, your client can tap on it, and get all sorts of information about it, including how they can save money through this Keller Mortgage program. And they, so they can just go through this little wizard and choose they wanna refinance, they wanna buy, continue, so on and so forth. So that's connected right through the app. And you can see at the bottom, again, it will still have your information there. So if somebody is using the app and like, let's say you give your app to somebody and they share it with a friend and their friend is looking at the screen, it's still going to be linked to you. And when that lender starts talking to the client, and they say, all right, you know, we got all this great information. I think it's time you start going and looking at properties. I see that, you know, Sharon um, referred you to us. Let me get you in touch with her. So they'll send it back to you. 
So that's a, just a tidbit of Keller Mortgage. There's lots of ways that they can help um, save your client time um, and, and money. So always a good thing to look into. The next thing under that is Keller Covered, which is our insurance. So this is exclusive to Keller Williams. Um, I mean, the Keller Mortgages too, but other companies of course have their own mortgage uh, branches, I guess. So Keller Covered, I the only place I've seen something like this is through us. Um, if you guys are familiar with the travel site Kayak, it lets you search several hotels, airlines, rental car places, all from one spot. I got a target alert. Look at that. They want me to come buy Christmas stuff. <laughs> um, this does the same thing in um, the insurance world. So Keller Williams has gone out and talked to lots of different insurance companies. I have actually used this twice myself. Um, so you'll get all the big names. So you also get some smaller name insurance companies and they'll, your clients are eligible for like a little bit of a discount because they're going through Keller Williams because we refer so many people, we get some better pricing on that. Um, some of these even, they don't even necessarily require you to call the company. You can just do everything right online or through the app. Um, and then of course, they'll have the phone numbers and everything too, if your clients prefer to um, talk on the phone with an insurance rep. So those are things that are a little different from some other real estate apps that can help you service your buyers at a higher level because it's all in one spot for them. Below that, of course, we have our property description and more information. This all just feeds right from the MLS. Um, one of the popular things that came up this year is actually tax information. Kathy, I know this is one of your favorites. <laughs> so under financial details, this actually does not pull from the MLS. You can see that uh, it pulls from, oh, I thought it said on here, it pulls from Pitney Bowes, um, which is a public record service. So you no longer have to rely on the fact that an agent put the information in and in correctly. It pulls right from that public database to get that financial um, information for the taxes. Under that, we have our neighborhood. This is also something that's going to be a little bit different on our app than other companies because we have a uh, exclusive agreement with Nextdoor, which lets us see statistics like that you would pull from the MLS. However, the statistics are for the Nextdoor neighborhood. So it's not for an entire zip code, it's for this specific location. So if I hit explore there, it will bring up some information including stats for this Lester School slash Washington neighborhood. And all of those stats are for that specific area that was highlighted on the map before we clicked on it, not for the entire town of Downers Grove. Because as you guys well know, you could cross a street and home values could be totally different on the east side or the west side or the north side or the south side. So this really helps you break it down to that you know small, four, five, 10 block radius, depending on how the neighborhoods are laid out. It will also show us other properties in that same neighborhood. And we have some more filters there. You can see active pending, open houses, et cetera. It's got what locals say. So it's kind of like a Yelp review type of situation here. And then we can scroll down and get our walkability score. We do have a connection right to Google Maps. So I think that this commute time thing is awesome. Your clients can program in three, and it's by programming, I mean, they type in three addresses and the system, the app will remember those three addresses for every house or neighborhood that they look at. And it will tell them um, the house or neighborhood that you're looking at right now is 16 minutes, five minutes, 17 minutes from these different addresses. You said that were your favorites and you wanted to know how close or far they were. So, you know, this could come in handy for workplaces, close friends and families, maybe their favorite restaurant, they got to be within walking distance or something, right? Or downtown, maybe the Metro. You could put any three options you want in there. You can always change them out just by hitting those three little dots and hitting edit. And then we have our school information. So this one, of course, most apps have school information. However, what we are able to feature is, I don't know if you guys notice, we actually have the student to teacher ratio on here. So not only does it have the school rating, but it tells you how many students per teacher are in those different locations. And then look at this, how fun is this? We're linked to Google again and Yelp down here. 
and we can see the popular Yelp reviews for things in the area. Right now, highlights is selected. I can look at restaurants specifically. So here's restaurants in this area, grocery stores in the area. Do you guys see how that could be valuable to your buyers to let them know what's around? That took me to the bottom of the neighborhood. All the way at the top, I've got this follow and share button. So if I really like this neighborhood and I want to send it to Christy, I can go ahead and hit share. And then my phone is going to open up all of my options of ways to share it with people. So this is however your phone works. It's going to look different on, you know, Apple versus Android, but it will just open your contact options and you could share that neighborhood with somebody. I could also choose to follow it. And now you see it's followed. Oops, I tapped it twice. Sorry, I got click happy. <laughs> so you can follow that. And um, I'll show you in just a moment where you can find that. But that means that as a consumer, now that I've hit follow, I can have easy access to find it in the future. Most of those features are things that your client will have had to have created an account for. And the beauty of that is that when they sign up for an account with you. They, if they are not already in command, they will feed into command for you. And anytime they're logged into the app or on the website and clicking around at different things, all of that information is actually gonna be logged in their contact card on command. So you can see what houses they were looking at, what neighborhoods they favorited. Um, and you can do a search in command to see who's have recent activity and use that as a reason to reach out. You don't have to tell them, hey, I saw you were looking at you know, one, two, three Main Street, but you can say, you know, I was thinking of you and steer the conversation around the real estate. Don't tell them that you were, you know, cyber stalking them. It's just kind of great insight to have. Uh, <laughs> Christy's laughing at me. <laughs> and know when you, maybe it's time to reach out to somebody. Okay, so now we're back to that listing page. Um, again, on here, I have a little heart, so I can also favorite my property. And I have the option now, I've already set up some collections. So I can add it to a collection I've already created, or I can make another one. Um, what's, oops, what's today, 12, 22? We'll just put that in there so you can see that as an example. What did you click to get to the save create collections? Just the, I just hit create collection at the top. Is that what you were saying? How did I get that create the new one? Okay, perfect. Yep. So I just hit this heart and it asked me where I wanted to save it. So I, I just put it on that sample one at the top, but that didn't exist. I had hit add another and it let me create a new one. Just hit cancel there to go back. All right, so I'm going to close that listing out and now we can see the full app again. If your clients prefer a list view versus a map view up in the top right, they can just tap list and scroll through the properties like this as well. And you can see there's a sort by and a save search too. All the way at the top, we also have save search. So I'm going to tap save search. So the first thing we did, if you remember, oh, my phone moved again, was click those filters. We put a price range in, we put a town in. So if I want to lock that search in place, I can just hit that save search option so that I can easily come back to it and not have to set all those filters up every time. So let's call it Downers Grove sample and we'll hit save. And before I hit save, I want to point out that there is this option to get email notifications and push notifications. So my push notifications are turned off. If my, if me as a buyer wanted to get notifications as soon as something came available on the app that met my criteria, I could turn those push notifications on in my settings. So that's gonna look different on the different phones. So that's very similar to an MLS search then. Or if I don't want them that frequently, I just kind of want to see what's going on in the market. I can get my email notifications and I can choose to never have them, have them instant daily, weekly, or bi-weekly. So you can choose what's best for you or your client. So I'll just hit save on that and save up in the top right. Amy, question. Can those be- Yes. Or is it just like- well, a I lost you. What was that? I heard you say question and then you cut out. What was oh. that? Can they get a text notification as well or is it just email? Um, email or push notification. So it wouldn't be a text, but if they turn those push notifications on, they'll get that little banner or however they have it set up on their phone to get push notifications. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
I'm going to go back to my map view. Okay, so now that I'm on my map, you can see here's the house I favorited. And if I go all the way to the bottom, I have a little heart that says saved. So that's where I can get back into all of my saved information. So you can see I have collections, I have searches, and I have neighborhoods. So I created, since we've been on today, I created that sample collection. I created a recent saved search and I saved that neighborhood. So they're all popping up right there. And I can just swipe left and right to get to all of my collections and all of my saved searches. And again, as I mentioned before, this is linked to the website. So if somebody now has all of this, they did it on the app and they wanna go look at something on the desktop, as long as they log into their account, everything will be saved and they'll be able to access it online on a um, laptop or desktop as well. Once I'm in a collection or a safe search or anything like that, I do have the ability to share it with other people. So these are some old properties, so they're all not for sale anymore. But you can see that that automatically updated for me. Let me go back to one that we just made. So I have more recent stuff. So I can hit those three dots on the top and I can edit the collection or I can add a collaborator. So if I'm looking for homes with my husband and I want him to have access to everything that I'm favoriting, I can just hit this add collaborator button and it's gonna send an invite to whoever I put in here and then they can have access to that information as well. So that's a really cool feature. And then I don't have to have two different apps going back and forth between two clients. They can just share that collection. And then you can see we also have um, the ability to edit or delete it through those three dots as well. All right. So the last thing that I really wanted to highlight today was that guide button all the way at the bottom in the middle. So I'm gonna tap that. So if you have never looked at this, it should already be set up for you and it is customizable. However, you do have to do the customization inside command. There are currently one buyer and one seller guide in there. Um, down the line, big picture, we would like to be able to do, you know, like a luxury guide or a commercial guide or, you know, an investment guide. Currently, it's just the two, uh, but that's where we're looking to go with this. And it shows you the step-by-step information for buying or for selling. So I just have the standard one set up, but you can go into command and update the language on here, add or remove steps and customize your images as well. So that's just really nice information to have on demand for your clients so that they can have a quick resource and know what to expect um, when working with you and buying and selling a home, especially in today's market, you might want to update it to make it, you know, set up those expectations so they understand what they're in for and, and um, what to expect going forward. Okay, one more thing about the search I just realized I didn't talk about, it's a good thing I have notes for you guys, is um, we can actually search by landmark. So we don't have to know the neighborhood. We don't have to know, you know, the streets or anything. We, we can say, um, you know, I want to be close to the Glen Ellen Library or a water tower or a metro station. So it dropped me right on top. See how it says no results found right now? That's because I am super zoomed in. So if I zoom out now, and I still have my filters on, but you can see right in the middle is my landmark there. And then these are the properties that meet my criteria that I've already set in that search filter that are close to that area. And you guys, your clients do have access to anywhere there's Keller Williams. So let's say you've got family in Colorado. I can go search, there's Denver, and I, I can now see what's available on the market out there as well. And your clients have access to this as well. They can set up collections, searches, everything. So if they are looking to move out of town or maybe they want a vacation home out of town, um, they can definitely have access to that. We are actually starting to go international as well because Keller Williams is international. So they're starting to program this map feature with wherever there's a Keller Williams, you can see what's going on. It's just, a, we got a 
not everybody in other countries uses an MLS like us, so they're just going one country at a time to get that programmed in for you. I think Bermuda was maybe the first one that was connected. Maybe it was the Bahamas. Oh, I can't type. I mix up the countries, but you can see it's just accessing it through Google Maps. So you'll have access all over the world. And then, like I said, it just depends on where we already have um, offices set up and what MLSs we have access to. All right, so what questions do you guys have? I have a question, Amy. Yeah. I'm seeing something um, that says agent picks, and I didn't used to see that. What what might that be? When I have like when I say Glen Ellen as my search, and all the properties pop up that are available, there's a whole bunch in red that say agent picks. Yes. So one of the things that you can do on the command side now is set up collections or featured properties as an agent. And then you can add clients to those and they'll be able to see that through the app as well. Just so you guys know, I just put in the chat a link to my YouTube playlist on the app. So I've gone into a little bit more depth on some of these different features. If you guys are interested in that, they're just little five minute videos. There's a couple of longer classes about like how to set up the app, how to brand it to yourself. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, you can click that link that I just put in the chat box and um, take a peek at those as well. Uh, if you didn't notice up in the top right, we do have the ability to change our view so we can look at satellite or we're on the default right now. And I have the draw feature. So if I know that I want this specific border, now I can look there. So just like on the MLS, you have the polygon tool, your clients can look through that draw tool as well. So if they know there's specific streets they wanna stay in and it's not a neighborhood as defined by next door, they can draw it themselves and then save that search too. I can just hit clear boundary and come back. And the feed is nice. Just thinking. Gina said, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I don't know why it's not up. Probably because I have a bunch of old searches. I'm sorry. I have I didn't update my, <laughs> my searches this week. I haven't um, put new stuff in recently. So that's probably why my feed's taken so long to load. But um, it's just a nice way to kind of scroll through everything. And then I'm back in the, the more section here. I like the history, which again, I haven't been on it recently, so there's not a lot of history, but you have your notification settings in here, your account information. Again, Keller Covered, Keller Mortgage, there's a calculator, which is fantastic. Nice to have right at your fingertip. And then easy to share. So as an agent, once you've logged in and claimed yourself as your own agent, you can hit the Share KW app. And share it to anybody on your phone or email, or you can see I have the airdrop feature. I could put it on social media, all kinds of options. Um, but that means that your clients have that same ability too. So if they really like it and they want to share it with somebody, they can do that. And um, it will prompt me with a message already. So it does come from a client uh, perspective. So that email or that text is already pre-programmed in there. But if you are sending it to somebody, I would come in and update it. Uh, to you know, just have like a little personal note with it. You can just text it to whoever you want. I'll close out of that. And then you have the ability to sign out, of course. But that is the app in half an hour. Um, Stephanie, I see your question. How are you able to edit the guided section again? Okay, I can show you that. That will actually be in command. That is in the consumer applet of command. Um, I'm happy to pull that up really quick. Does anybody have any other questions about the app while I have my phone screen shared? Otherwise, I can pop over to command and share that too. Let me just see if anything's coming up. Hey, Amy, I have a question. Yeah. I think you already touched on this, but remind me, um, how do we get notified when a client is 
favorite, like favoriting properties and things like that. Yeah, so you'll be able to see all of that in command as well. So I can walk through that on the other side in just a minute. That's a good question. Yeah, and that's also kind of part of my question too, is through command when we have, you know, our clients set up on the monthly neighborhood nurture. <clears throat> and as I'm going through, you know, this kind of downtime in the season, I'm going through my database again and kind of making sure that I have tags attached, yada, yada. And as I'm doing that, I'm noticing that there's clients that have looked at properties just as I'm in there. And I'm like, wait a second. I didn't know that, they, you know what I'm saying? So I would mm -hmm. like to know if we can get notified of when somebody just playing around, getting that email is actually opening it up and, and looking at stuff. Good question. Okay. I think all of this stuff so far is the command side. So I'm going to stop my um, phone screen share and I'm going to share command. There we go. So I'm just logged into command as uh, I'm on the home screen really quick, or at, like I've just logged in. All the way at the bottom is the consumer app button. So this is the first question um, that we got about how we can edit those guides. So I hit consumer and up at the top in the white bar, there's an option here that says guide builder. So you just click on that and you'll see you have your buying and selling and you can hit the three little dots on the far right, hit edit and here are all your steps. So you can drag and drop these to reorder them. You can click in here to edit them and so on and so forth. So that was consumer and then guide builder. So that's where you can go to play around with those. And to see your client's activity, we want to go into contacts. So that's the second app on the top left. And actually let me log into a different account. Uh, this one. All right, so if you guys remember my agent link to the app I was just using was demo. So here is that account. And I'm going to pull up Phil. Well, actually, let me show you this. So if you don't know who's been using your app and you want to be able to quickly see that or on the website again, you'll get the same activity there. If you guys hit this customize columns button, there's going to be an option here that says recent activity. So I'm going to turn that on and drag it up to the top and hit apply. So here's my recently active column and I can search by recently active. And you can see that's today, 11 minutes ago, Phil was doing something. Um, yesterday, Kathy was doing something, so on and so forth. So I can see all of that. So if I see that this was recently active, I can click on Phil and I can see exactly what he was doing in that right hand side of my contact timeline. So I can see the specific property he looked at. I can see that he viewed a collection. I can see that he created a saved search, created sample, looked at this listing, viewed this neighborhood. So I can see all of that information. And then this is back to earlier this month. So that's where you can get the history in there. And you can actually see all of the saved searches that they have up in the top right hand corner of their contact card. So these are all the saved searches that have been set up through that account. All of the ones that are grayed out here are ones that your client set up and anything that is editable means that you set it up for them. Did that help answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Of course. Then uh, also, I believe, let me just double check here. Uh, yes, okay, so let me see if I can get my screen to reshare. I'm gonna close this one. One second, I'm gonna try to get my phone up again. Sometimes it's a little finicky. It's thinking. So in the command mobile app, so your app to use for your business. Yeah, it's not pulling up. Give me one second. Let me just close out of this program and open it back up. Um, so command mobile actually has a, I don't want to say a shortcut, but right, it's got a little tile on the home screen that talks about recently active people. So that filter I just pulled up on the command desktop is a little tile on the dashboard of command of the command app. 
Um, so give me one second. We're getting that screen pulled back up. It's thinking, it's thinking. Here we go. Okay, let me share that. All right, you guys see my screen? I'm gonna close that. Okay, so I mentioned that the white app with the red KW, that's the consumer one. The red one with the white KW that says command, that's your link into command from your phone. So I'm just gonna tap on that. This is the home screen. Right here it says recently active. So if somebody has had recent activity, they will show up right there. Now I am not logged into the demo account from this app, so it's not showing that recent activity that Phil just had. However, that is where that would be. I just tapped on it and it would show you right here. You can see that recently active is selected. I'm just inside my contacts and I can see who's been recently active with things. Hey, Shannon on there. <laughs> um, you probably know a lot of these people, guys. Uh, so they've been recently active with something either I've sent them or they, you know, reached out to me and stuff like that. So there is a recently active view on the command app as well. So if you're like in between appointments and you just want to check and see who's been up to what, you can pull this up, click on that recently active and see who's been doing what right from your phone. So that's a extra little tidbit for you. All right. Close out of that again. And we'll stop screen sharing. And I think that covers most of what you guys asked. And just check the chat again. Yeah, I don't see anything new in here. So I think, you know, honestly, the best way to play around to get to know your app more is to play around with it. Um, give it to a friend or a family member so that you can see what they're doing inside your command accounts. So you can can test that. Um, and they're always rolling out new features. Uh, one of the things we're working on right now is actually being able to communicate through those collections and featured properties. So if somebody has a question, they can just type it in the notes and you would get a notification to see it. And um, you would see all of that information there. Um, and if you didn't notice, people can request showings right through the app as well. And you would get an email notification of that too. So there we have it. We did, we covered a lot today. Lots of good features in the app. Um, like I said, go ahead and play around with it. You can always bring your questions to Command on Demand if you want to dig into anything a little bit more. Um, next week, we will be back at the same time and we will be going over, we're doing a social media topic next week. So we'll be talking about Facebook groups and how you can use them um, for marketing in your real estate business. Go figure. <laughs> so you guys have a very Merry Christmas. And I hope to see you back next Wednesday. And like I said, this will be live on Saturday at 7 a.m. if you want to uh, review it. So thank you all so much for coming. I appreciate you taking the time to be here with me today. Thank you. Thanks, Amy.